Welcome, welcome to A Vision Entertainment Media Broadcast. We are here with another one, a special guest. This woman has an ex extensive resume. I mean, she goes back for years, and, and we're going to get into everything. This is Kathleen Bradley. You may know her from Friday, but if you look at her resume, she has she did uh, shows like Amen, Good Times. Uh, a house divided, uh, so forth and so on. She did so many shows. How are you today, Miss Kathleen? Hi, I am wonderful. Thank you, and thank you for having me today. <laughs> it's My a pleasure. pleasure. Yes, yes, it's a pleasure that you came onto the show because I was trying to get you for a while, and I know how yeah. busy your, your schedule are. But welcome, yeah. welcome. Um, let's. I want to. I want to go right in and just talk about your extensive resume from. Um, uh, the price is right. Can we start there? Because a lot of people did not know. I didn't know that you were on the price is right. Can you tell me about that moment being on the, on the price is right? Well, and, you know, and, actually, let, let me kind of start a little bit from the beginning, how I even got on the price is right. Okay. And okay. Uh, I've always, you know, inspired to be in the show business since I was very young. I always have been into entertainment of sorts and different things of that nature. But uh, I, I traveled for a long, long time with a singing group actually uh, called The Love Machine. We were and with yeah. Motown. The Miracles wrote that song, Love Machine, for us. We were supposed mm -hmm. to do it, but they did it. And traveled all around the world for many, many years. Wow. It was great, wonderful, very rewarding. Mm -hmm. And at one wow. point after I left the group, uh, I came back to L.A., uh, from Europe, actually, Europe, mm -hmm. and uh, got married, had a, a beautiful baby, and then got back in the entertainment industry, and then remarried. Mm -hmm. But anyway, needless to say, uh, after my second child, which is Terrence, with who you'll meet later, yeah, uh, it was about two months after I had him, my agent called, said, Kathleen, Kathleen, you have a <laughs> very big opportunity to be one of Barker Beauties on the prices, right? They're looking wow. for a black model. You wow. would be perfect. I'm like, oh. okay. So thank God I have always kept my body in shape. You know, mm -hmm. in this business, your body and your face, that is pretty much your passport. It's a must, uh, right? It's, yeah, it's a must, you know, and I, I yeah. have to look a certain way. So I was prepared. And I had to go on, in, in, on an interview for The Price is Right. And this was in 1989, actually, before I even got on. It was 89, okay. the end of the year. They must have seen about 200, 300 models from all over. And they kept calling me back for interviews and to do live shows. And finally, in 1990, they offered me the part. And it, you know, having to go to CBS every day to work, man, that was a wonderful just an incredible wow. blessing, something I had prayed for. You know, I didn't have wow. much dialogue or any to, to, to memorize. And wow. we actually wow. worked wow. three days a week. We mm -hmm. worked three weeks a month and we were wow. off. Then we had hiatus. And thank God, knock on wood behind me, I was on that show for 10 years. The first black slash African-American yeah, model to right. be a Barker's beauty. And I and tell you, uh, it was a great experience. Wow, and I was going to ask you, what was your job description? What exactly is it for the viewers that you were doing on The Price is Right? Well, I was modeling, you know, if anybody and pretty much everybody has seen The Price is Right. And yeah. college students, they used to base their whole curriculum, this is true, oh. curriculum around being able to watch The Price is Right every morning. Here in Los Angeles, in some places, it came out like either 10, 9, or 11 o'clock in the morning. And Bob Barker, very, very popular. Uh, and especially the senior citizens, everybody, grandmama stuff, who especially was home during that time of day would watch it. It became like a mecca, which it still is, because you can go on that show, get on. You don't have to have an IQ, Jeopardy, or uh, <laughs> one foot yeah. two or something. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's prizes that give away. All you have to pretty much know is to guess the price of everyday things That's you it. purchase in the store. And, That's you know, it. I say a new car giveaway. I'd be standing behind showing the product, doing different things. And, you yeah. know, we did. It was a little challenging. It was not as easy as people thought it was, but we rehearse and have our production meetings and have to meet, make our mark and be behind the right curtain, the right door when it opened and everything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was just great pleasure. 
but now, until I got fired, but it was okay. Now I was going to ask, I was going to ask, um, back then, was it a lot of, uh, betrayals and a lot of, uh, dirty little secrets, like behind the CBS studios, things like that. Um, how, how did you manage to get over all of that stuff? You know, it was kind of, uh, challenging to some degree. I never really let it bother me, but, um, uh, Sometimes, you know, I actually, let me tell you this. I found out more things about the show and behind some of the scenes and productions that I wasn't involved in that how It was a little more racist to some degree. You know, there's always that word flying around sometimes where people are laughing at some people in the audience and calling them different names, even womanizing to a degree, wow. not terribly bad. And, you know, after I actually left uh, the show, actually we, Janice and I were wrongfully terminated but because Bob Barker, he was nice guy and cool and good to a degree. But one of the models uh, had filed a uh, suit against him for sexual harassment, Diane wow. Parkinson. They yeah. had a little hanky panky going on. And wow. he really, she was a woman scorned because he really did not put her down, let her go correctly. So she said she wanted to, you know, file sexual harassment. But everyone knew very well that they had their little hanky panky going on. Okay, she yeah. go down there here yeah. to the dressing room and then wow. during the break time and stuff, come back up with her robe on. I'm like, hey, wow. what you doing, girl? You got yeah. girl, you got a little bit of yogurt on your face. What you doing eating lunch? <laughs> and you know what I did? I wrote a book, and I know you're going to ask me about it. Yes, I wrote okay, a book. yeah, that's mm -hmm. coming up. You have yeah. the book backstage at the price backstage is right. Backstage at the price is at right. Price. Memoirs of a yes, spark we, of beauty. We're going to get right into the book. She has the book out. Now, oh man, now, CBS, you went, the price is right. You're not only uh, an actress, but you you were also a singer, a model. You know, you did so many things at the height of your career. And I know you're not at the height right now because you're still doing things right now. Oh, thank you. Yes, you know? I am still. Forging ahead, it's just like it's in, innate, innately in your blood once you get the uh, entertainment bug. And I've been very fortunate to be working at one end of the other, be it hosting, or I've directed a few little videos and some TV things lightly and produced some uh, yeah. radio shows and so very much things, so many things you can do and people that are out there looking and watching to, you know, if you're not right in front of the camera, there are so many other aspects on the other side of the camera. And this entertainment industry, it's quite a closed knit industry, but once you get in and get involved and, and you start working, I don't care if it's a grip, pull and wire, if you do a lighting person or a first AD or a mm. production, anything, just, you know, pursue it, get in it. And then usually you'll it'll catapult and you'll start working and working based on your ability to do good work in this business. Because, you know, sometimes you do things and when they say you'll never work in this town again, wow. if you mess up, that's true. <laughs> so do it right, do good. Wow. Have so, love for your job. I don't care if it's pushing a broom, if you commit, <laughs> commit and do well at it. <laughs> wow, so how long did it take you to write the book? Like, when did the book come out? Number one, that's what I want to know. Well, what, you know, you actually, think? the book has been out for a while. It came out in 2014. Oh, and okay, so I actually had a an agent who I thought would be able to really help put it on the map and get a lot of promo and different things okay. of that nature. But, but he, he wasn't the right agent. I did some book touring back, especially I'm from Ohio. Of course, you know, I had to go back there and uh, Barnes and Nobles had picked it up for a little bit. But it just really didn't get the right kind of PR publicity it should have gotten. It was on okay. extra on one of the entertainment networks, short little blurb about it. But mm -hmm. uh, and then I, I obviously CBS, they were not going to condone it. They actually had me blackballed on some of the CBS affiliate networks when I was oh. traveling. They would I was not ask you that. let yeah. my, my, my agent even talk to them. They were not even thinking about it letting me on with the book but it is not a bob barker bashing book i am not bashing bob barker and it kind of encompasses my 10 years on the show obviously and i allude to or, or relate to some of the uh, reasons why i got there how i got there in terms of my life and profession but it's mm -hmm. yet still it's not my biopic it's not my bio <clears throat> 
but it's very interesting. It's such an easy read, and it's like me. You know, I've got a great personality, a lot of fun yeah. injected in it, a lot yeah, of photos, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, I really enjoyed writing it. It took a while, and uh, I, I, I got it done. You know, I encourage anybody who has any kind of story you think is not important that may be important to a lot of people to mm -hmm. write, 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 write. Start just write down an idea, put it in your microphone, in your phone. We think about stuff. It doesn't That's have right. to be in chronological order or anything. Right. Writing yeah. is a great release for your soul and expression, you know, and a lot of people just need to do that nowadays to get a little bit off your chest. Just write right. it out. That's right. And there, there you go. And you also talked about um, the love machine, your group. And you I think you forgot about destination, right? You also was in destination. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Destination. <laughs> well, I was in the love machine first for uh, uh, eight years. Like I said, we traveled in Italy, Germany, Spain, Belgium, Sweden, Switzerland, Africa, around Asia, the world. Africa, okay. all around the uh, world, uh, honey. Uh, we would be gone three, four months out of the year sometime. It was very difficult, as you can imagine, try to maintain a relationship and be gone that long. We were seven yeah. girls singing, dancing. We were like Tina Turner, Temptation, Beyonce, uh, Destination. Wow. I mean, we were high energy, honey. We come off that stage to be <laughs> sweating down. And, and uh, we uh, were with Motown for a while, like I said, and the, the, the Miracles wrote the song, She's Just a Love Machine for Us. We were mm -hmm. supposed to sing that. She's just a love machine. machine. And I yeah. won't work for nobody. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. So, 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 we just didn't yeah. get it for reasons. What, <laughs> how did you transform from a, um, a singer to a, an actress? How did that come about? Oh, well, you know, that's very easy. Oh, oh but let me just mention you did say about Desti Destination, and I forgot. Destination. After yeah. I left the love machine, I was offered a position with. Uh, Danny Lugo, Linda Theus, there were three of us. We were a trio. We were uh, with Butterfly MCA Records. And this was okay. in the height, in the beginning of the disco era. So we did do a remake of Curtis Mayfield's Move On Up. Da, da, da. It was the oh, disco okay. beat. Oh, mm -hmm. and it, it, it was a hot version. And Move On Up, it was the beat. I mean, tell you, we'd have it in all the clubs, <laughs> especially the yeah. gays. They loved it in some of the places. We worked mm -hmm. at the uh, Whiskey at Go Go. We worked at the uh, Troubadour. We, we were at the um, Copacabana in New York and all kind of wow. places. So wow. uh, I did get a chance just to travel extensively with them as well. But you know, being mm. in the entertainment industry per se, you have to be versatile for the most part especially nowadays. But for mm -hmm. me, I'd, I'd always acted and been modeling even before I got into the love machine, uh, even in high school and what have you. So it just all kind of comes together for, you You know, stage is a stage and being on that yeah. stage and being ready, whether it's uh, 10,000 people sitting in front of you watching you or yeah, if right. you're, a camera is uh, filming you or, or, or doing the work in front. But it's just amazing feeling to know that you're doing something you really enjoy doing. That's another one. That's well said. And can you also tell me about when you won Miss California, I'm sorry, Miss Black California Award. What what was that about? Can you explain that to me? How did you Miss Black that? California, actually, I came from Ohio. I'm from there you go. All right, how is that? Better. That's better. better. Okay. Yes. I'm glad I got my tech guy here. Yeah, that's, that's saving much, grace. All right, that's good. You know, that's much, it. much better. That when we was talking about the uh, Miss Black California Award. Oh, 19, Miss Black California. Okay. 1971 or 1970? Yes, I won in 19. I got here from California. I mean, from El, uh, Ohio. Duh. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got here from Ohio in Ohio. 1970, and I entered into a lot of beauty pageants. Because, you know, I always believe in them wholeheartedly. And it's a great way to uh, expose yourself, not literally, but to be exposed yeah, yeah. to a lot of different people in the industry all the time that people are seeing, you know, out there and some publicity. I was Miss Fine Brown Frame. I was Miss Hot Pants. I was Miss, you know, you name it, do it. And then yeah. um, a friend came along and said, you should enter in the Miss Black California beauty pageant. And it was at Mavericks Flat and John Daniels, who owned Mavericks Flat, who also was the manager for my singing, for the singing group, The Love Machine. The Love he Machine. Uh, had that. And I won I won the uh, pageant, Miss Black California. 
And wow. through that, I went through the Miss Black America pageant, but didn't win, obviously. But I was able to get with the Miss Black America USO tour. And we were oh, able wow. to tour Vietnam and Thailand for our troops over there in the 70s, 71. Wonderful. And it was the most incredible journey you ever want to undertake. And that was pretty much the first time I was, you know, went abroad to travel and in everything. I had a brother over there in Vietnam, Nam and Cameron Bay, Cameron Bay, and I was able to see him. And they always asked everybody if you have some relatives or family over there. Because you know, back then you always think the very, very worst, which it was kind of bad. But yeah. back in the 70s, 71s, it was kind of cooling down a little bit, not so intense. Okay. But that was okay. it. I mean, something I shall never forget. But it so, was a so, great um, just journey being Miss Black California. Did you wear like a nice fro back then or no? I had my <laughs> afro. People can look and see. I have some of those pictures on my uh, website and you can Google it. Kathleen Bradley on my Instagram. I go back and do that throwback Thursday, honey. I had mm -hmm. white friend John dancing with high boots and because I was saying rock steady, baby. Live what you do yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, and I was yeah. singing have my fro. It and was fro. incredible. I have, you know, when you we have to look back and see those afros, and we're like, okay, yeah. that was the style then, but what were we thinking? Lord, I don't even remember combing it out and picking it out. It was all oh, my yeah. hair. <laughs> but it was what everybody was doing back then, like in the 60s. That's and 70s. it. You had to have a fro, honey. Shoot. Yeah. Uh -huh. And also, not only from movies to modeling, you also was in Dr. Dre's Bad Intention video. Uh, yeah. How did that happen? How did you get that phone call to be in that video? Uh, I was on The Price is Right when I did that video. I'm trying to think, was it before or after I did Friday? I, can't, I think it was <laughs> after I did Friday. I, it was after I did Friday, I did Bad Intention. I think because okay. he knew me from Bad Intentions and specifically asked. From Friday, he knew me from Friday. Okay. Friday, the movie, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I did Friday first. Then Dr. Dre, he uh, requested me, either through my agent, manager, a mutual friend. I mm -hmm. can't remember how I did that, but it, that was a lot of fun, Bad Intentions. That was it. I think that's a good video to this day. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. yeah. How often do you watch the video? I mean, do you still do it every now and then? You know what? I I, have, I see it every now and then if it comes on. I'm not too much into YouTube videos and music and a lot of uh, different rap and stuff. But uh, I did manage to, you know, download it and put it in uh, some of my, uh, on my website. I think it's on my website video. But okay. every time I see it, you know, I'm like, wow, with Tommy Davidson was in it, you know? I, yeah, and, it's, it's crazy. I didn't yeah, see him. I didn't see yeah. Yeah. Oh, you was looking at the girls, huh? Tommy <laughs> Davidson was all up in that bad intentions near the end. He he was funny, man. He was I in one of the, the board I, I was the madam of the Bardello for people who don't know Bordello. And Tommy Davidson was in like what the little harem scene with all these girls and stuff and they were just looking touching them stuff. I think at one point he had his underwear on and was running back and forth <laughs> through the bordello. I don't know if we got busted or what have wow. you. And nocturnal i saw nocturnal not too long ago yeah he was yeah. out and about with his crazy self <laughs> <laughs> wow so you had a lot going on you and how did okay let's talk about friday everyone knows you as miss parker miss parker how did you get the role for friday did you get an no. audition as everything happens in divine order, because I was on The Price is Right at that time oh, in wow. 1995, uh, Ice Cube, he said, and specifically put out to look for me and said, I want that black lady. I didn't have a name then. I was the black lady on The Price, the is, Price right is Right to yeah. play Miss Parker. <laughs> and uh, my agent found out and uh, yeah. I went for it. I did have to audition, but there was only like one or two people who auditioned. They pretty much had it in their mind that I was the one. Was so the one. evidently I got the part. Yeah. And uh, you know, that was just a, a phenomena in and of itself. No one ever dreamed or we never imagined that the, uh, Friday would be the, the incredible big beginning of so many careers for everybody and the movie still to this day i'm still getting good residual checks from there we get more money on the residual side than we got paid of course wow. we did like what they call a favorite nations everybody we just got very little paid during that time well, it was okay 
It was like the labor of love. Every, everybody got little pay or just certain people? Most of us got paid, pay, I think we get something like $250 or something just to, on a daily basis. Most oh, wow. people okay. did. Yeah, it was a low budget. You have to remember, it was a very low budget at that time. And we had did it like in 28 days. They take the whole day film. You know, that's almost incredible, not unheard of uh, to do that. Yeah, 28 F. days. Gary, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. F. Gary Gray, that was his directorial debut. And he did obviously an incredible job. What a wonderful director. And you know, everybody who knows who F. Gary Gray is, he went yeah, on to, yeah. to uh, do Set It Off, Negotiator, the French Connection. Man, that boy is balling. He is incredible. And I wow. see him out every now and then and yeah. remind him he needs to put his girl back in the new film. Okay. That's right. You have yeah, to be current in this town, you know, to yeah. do certain things because if you're not, they'll forget about you, you know. Now, when I watched you on Friday, I just looked at you as the, the next door uh, beautiful woman. But how did you feel when um, uh, Chris Tucker mentioned um, a hoe? Like you were a I hoe. know. I, you know what? I had never, I hadn't seen the script, first of all. Oh, we just got like sides. And I just knew that she was a sexy next door, uh, cross street next door neighbor. Yeah. And she's going to be watering her plants and stuff. And they boys did. Because we, when we did like a, a reading, we had the rehearsal. I don't, I, we never did a table reading. People who don't know a table reading is when you first get a script and you're going to do a film or movie or maybe a TV show. All the production staff and the cast will sit down at a table or in, okay. a, in a room and, and you'll and all discuss. read your part. Just discuss okay. it and read discuss. it because so they can find and get some better direction for it. Okay. So we, we uh, just did a rehearsal run through when I first got there and Chris uh, Tucker was just saying, yeah, she's a hoe. She knows she's a hoe. I'm like, oh, a hoe? She's a, I'm not a hoe. And, now, and, I took it, it a little personal. Yeah, it was, no, it, it was in the script. Uh, there's a lot of ad-libbing going on in that film, a wow. lot of ad-libbing, okay. which was a great thing that, because F. Gary Gray allowed us license, so to speak, as actors to make it come to life, you know, and not okay. stick with the script sometimes and get steroid, uh, sterile. <laughs> Um, so at that point when we he said she oh Miss Parker she you know she's a nasty I saw me I got offended wow. but I'm, I was seeing I, I after obviously we started doing I seen Miss Parker was like she was a whole probably pretty much <laughs> but it was okay he never really used that but you know and then when they gave him that hose they said just be I, that was all me just be seductive water in the water and just oh you that, know, that was go. all you. <laughs> that was all me, honey, with just okay. all this and the, everything and the bending over was just everybody. So just <laughs> how you, you know, yeah. didn't really just stoop down. You bent over and it was wow. like, wow. seriously, I mean, I, you know, it is iconic. And I'm just in, so incredibly grateful that, you know, everything you do, every step you make, it, it just, it, it worked. Everybody that was in that movie for the part that they portrayed just worked and got stuck. Damn, with that particular person that I always remember to this yeah. day that people know yeah. Debo, Felicia, Debo. Uh, yeah. uh, even my neck, my back, my neck and my back in, oh. in the grocery store when uh, oh, my boy, he was breast his soul now, A.J. Johnson died. And so yeah. many things by Felicia and hi, Miss Parker, and just so many little uh, words and sayings that came out of that movie. <laughs> it's funny. Wow. Do, do everybody still talk to this day? Like, do you see, um, you know, any of the other characters? You know what? I stay in touch with my husband, little Tony Cox. Okay. Every now and then we'll talk, okay. and he likes to play Bid Whist. So we invite him over here to play some Bid Whist from time to time. <laughs> and Felicia, okay. um, Angela Mean. Yeah, Felicia. Uh, yeah. She and I are very close. She is, has a vegan uh, restaurant. It's called oh, wow. Jackfruit Cafe. Incredible food. And she's an, I mean, she's a stone uh, vegan, uh, no dairy or nothing. She makes the best mac and cheese without the cheese. Wow, wow, wow. She simulates shrimp and she does that. This jackfruit is like a shredded beef. And that where's the restaurant? Where is it? it so she has it here in LA now. She used to have a food truck and then she moved to Santa Monica to a, a, a food court. 
Now okay. I forgot. I think she's somewhere in Lamert Park, people. But it's Jackfruit Cafe. If anybody's watching this, it's Jackfruit, Jackfruit. Cafe. Wow. And so um, I traveled a little bit with Debo, to a tiny Angela, and I. We went to do a couple of comic cons in Texas. Rest okay. his soul. Um, I, I used to see uh, Regina every now and then. And oh, Anna, Anna Marie Hosford. I do kind of still stay you see in her? touch with her. Yeah, that's my girl. She's a sweetheart. She really oh, is. Oh, wow. Do and, you I believe just, and you know, actually, when John uh, Weatherspoon died, that was yeah, like a yeah. big reunion for everybody. We had yeah. seen each other and probably since the movie was shot and filmed in over 20 some years. And though when John died, uh, you know, I still was at Chris Tucker, uh, yeah. Angela, Debo at that time was still alive. Uh, so many people uh, came out and we really kind of reminisced and had, unfortunately, not such a good time to do it, but it was a time for celebration anyway. And we were yeah. so glad to uh, see each other again. Well, that's, that's good. Everyone came out together after that. Do you believe that after Friday, it made you like really take off or this was happening before Friday even started. That what, I'm sorry, what? Like, what like do, well, do you believe, or would you say that after Friday, that's when your career really took off or it started way before Friday already? Uh, you know what, the thing is, it didn't, well, not really. I was still on The Price is Right. I think I was doing, getting more publicity from being on The Price is Right daily. You have to remember, 17 million people watch that show a day. So I had more notoriety from The Price is Right at that time, because Friday wasn't really that big until later, maybe several years after. Yeah, it got a little popular, yeah. but the more and more it was shown, the bigger the fan base got. So, but basically I, I did some special appearances in different speaking engagements and a couple of the little TV things as a result of being on the prices, right? But yeah. obviously, you know, the latter part of the, the, the years after Friday was rolling, I obviously did take advantage of it to a degree. That's right. That's and right. Uh, it did help catapult me into different uh, venues, avenues of uh, yeah. entertainment. Absolutely. Some point. And not only Friday, not only the rest of those movies, you also was in Harlem Nights. Oh, right, Harlem Nights. I what? actually was in the elevator with Tommy Smalls. I was pregnant with my uh -huh. son, who you guys are going to meet real soon, Sir Reddington right. T. Sir, Sir Reddington. Yeah, uh -huh. Sir Reddington. I was pregnant with him. I knew Eddie Murphy very well. Used to date him way back in the day, but uh, Red Fox was in it, who I knew, Richard Pryor, all the players, and, and, and uh -huh. Ella. Uh, uh, Della Reese. I knew everybody that was in it, so I got actually offered the, the part from from uh, Eddie Murphy. I really wanted to play uh, the one Layla with Sean did Sunshine, honey, but oh, she worked okay. that part. I ain't mad at her. So <laughs> I was actually pregnant with in that elevator with Tommy Smalls, mm -hmm. Danny Ayala. It's very quick. Don't blink, you'll miss it. But it's me, and I, yeah, that was another great movie that really a lot of people didn't appreciate till after the latter part of the years after they yeah. kept seeing it and seeing it. They're like, and the and studios didn't even want to make it. They did not want to make that. Oh, they wow. said black people don't have this opulence and owning clubs and doing all this. They actually said this. that? Oh, wow. Huh? Oh, they yeah, yeah. They had a little difficulty making that. Because it was very, actually, in, in spite of all the cursing and all the bad language yeah. and different things, mm -hmm. it was a, a well-directed, produced movie and visually you know stunning with the clothing and the, uh, all the opulence with this uh scenery and the uh nightclubs and the houses and everything so they, they did spend quite a bit of money on it and like once again it, it just started making money after a while uh after you know people start wanting to see more videos and films that weren't being made that you couldn't really see a lot of us doing different things wow but that was a fun time working on that project Wow, that's that's beautiful. And we're gonna bring on your son, Sir Reddington. He's a he's a rapper. I heard his stuff and I, I love it, especially illegal. He has a song called Illegal. I played it three or four times last night. I know so. it is. He's amazing. <laughs> now I yeah. gotta tell everybody, 
because yeah. uh, we're going to bring him on in a minute. And he, yeah. my son, and I, I don't just say this lightly, but he's very talented. When he first started doing his rapping and music, which has been a while, he's been in the game a while. And he deserves yeah. a really, really big break. And I want to thank you for uh, inviting him on to the show with me here. Right. And uh, so he's going to come on without any further ado very soon. But let's, right. let's make sure. I know you're going to flash all, all of our uh, Instagrams and different things. Yeah, but, you yeah, know, once yeah. again, the book, you can go on, people and get it on Amazon mm -hmm. uh, and order the book and Back, do That's the book, do. Backstage at the Price is Right. We have- Memoirs of a Barking Memoir, Beauty. That's right, that's right. And we have Kathleen Bradley. Y'all know her as fully, uh, I'm sorry, Miss Parker, Miss Parker, but she has an extensive resume that I've just learned about also. Yeah. And I'm gonna- And it's on my website, KathleenBradley.tv. Kathleen, so, yeah. KathleenBradley.tv. That's the website. Yeah, right. Okay. You'll flat. You'll be. Able, I know you're gonna flash everything when we do yeah, this. So, uh, if you're ready for Mr. Uh, Terrence, I can call him in. Sir Reddington. Sir I'm gonna Reddington. bring him in. I'm gonna bring him in right now. I'm gonna click him right on in. And everybody, I want y'all to meet her son. This is Sir Reddington. She called him Terrence. Well, his name is Terrence, but the rap name I think is Terrence. Sir Reddington. <laughs> Just like there a mom. Boy, get on in here. Boy. I got him. I got, I got him. <laughs> I got oh, there him. he is. Oh, okay. How's it I going? thought he was in the bathroom or something. Peace, hey. peace. I'm here. How you feel, man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good, man. Feeling blessed. Really, really That's happy to be on your show, man. It's really, really dope. Oh, man. Yeah, your mom was telling me about you. So I went on YouTube. I checked you out. I love what you're doing, man. Keep up the great work. Now, do you go by Sir Reddington as the rap name? Yeah, yeah, that's my okay. rap name. Yeah, okay. yeah, me and some buddies came up with that, just pulling around, you know, we just, uh, you know, in the studio, just making some English accents to each other, you know, and making some jokes, like, oh, you look like Reddington. Oh, no, his last name is Red, it should be Reddington. Oh, yes, sir, yes, right, indeed. And then it just kind of stuck. I kind of liked it, you know. Wow, so you're not only a rapper, hip-hop rapper, you're also an audio engineer and a producer, right? Yes, wow. sir. Yep. Now, yep. Now, can you tell me at what age did all of this all of this happen for you? Uh man, I was uh making beats on my god brothers, right? Uh uh 15 making started. beats at 15. Yeah, wow. yeah, then really started writing and becoming an artist around 17, 18 years old on the way out of high school. You know, okay. I was surrounded by some other cats that was really into that stuff. So, and I was already kind of like surrounded by it already, you know, for mm -hmm. music wise. My mom is in the uh, music group, the Love Machine. So I was yeah. kind of like behind the whole entertainment side of it and saw how everything was going on. So, yeah, man, it was, you know, around like 15, 15. for me, I started to really take it on myself to try to do something. Now, now was it a little easier for you to get in? Because your mom was already in, in, a, in a group called the Love Machine and Destination, or, or you worked hard on your own to get it. <laughs> um, it's a bit of both. It's more okay. so. Actually, I say it leans a little bit towards you know my mom being my mom, you know. But okay. you know, I definitely uh, you know it it helped. It helped with okay. her being there, and then I kind of just stepped through the doors and got my creativity uh, together. And you know, got the people to back me up to go and uh, uh, push my whole my whole uh, foundation organization as Re Sir Reddington. So uh, you know, I, I've done everything myself. You know, as you see, like writer, producer, audio engineer. Yeah, like yeah. literally, I've done everything besides artwork myself. You know, uh, and just just you know, it kind of kind of just grew from there. And uh, you know that's how I like to do it. I love to collab as well, but you know I learned how to do it myself. I feel like that's important when you even start anything, so you know what it takes. You know, but you know it takes time. But then when you put in the time, you know a lot of people will see what you're doing and then go right. be a part of your right. team and be a part of the help. That's right. That's right. And, mm -hmm. and you also one of your videos went viral and and popular. You, you know you you had your mother in one of your videos, correct? And and every, yeah. everyone everyone loved it. <laughs> they loved it, <laughs> you know. And tell me, what are you doing right now? Do you have an album coming out? A full album right now? 
Um, yeah, man, I'm working on two projects right now. I'm working on uh, Serenity myself right now. It's called Window Seat. You know, Window Seat. Okay, that's mm -hmm. the album name. Window yeah, Window okay. Seat. Yes, yeah, it's, it's coming out. It's coming out like literally the next few months. So I'm gonna definitely let you hear that, man, and let the world know what's going on with me right now and how much of a lyricist I've actually grown and what's going on in my life now. So it's going to be a real fun joint, real fun joint. Window Seat. Window Seat is dropping from Sir Reddington. Also, people, you have to go to YouTube. The man has a whole list of videos, nice songs. Illegal. Illegal is what I'm representing. <laughs> I, I, I love that. I love the flow. I love the beat. I think I'm too legit, I spit fire so lethal My brain is sick, bottom line I said I think it might be illegal I want everybody to tune in Sir Reddington, give me your website Give me your, your email, your Instagram All of that, give it to him Oh man, IG Sir underscore Reddington Man, follow, like Tune in to the, to the lives You know, I'm on there I'm always doing music um, Follow me, uh Twitter, uh, subscribe to YouTube. The videos are coming. The videos will keep coming. The content's there. Always here to uh, entertain y'all. SirReddington.com. Authentic stuff. Uh, how it all started and how it's all going. And make sure y'all stay tuned and get ready for that window seat popping. And also got another album coming out with my other boy. We also call Red Magic. Uh, complicated yeah, productions. Yeah. He's the he's the guy that also shot the video for Illegal as well. So uh, yeah, we multi talented. We multitasking. Uh, that's coming out soon as well. So check us out, uh, SirRennington dot com. Really appreciate y'all. Keep supporting. Keep watching. Now you yeah. now you also I hope everyone got got it. You also mentioned performing. You had a bunch of performers, people calling you up saying, we want you down the club, we want you down the club. Is that still going on right now? Uh, not as much as it used to, but I don't say no to a performance. I mm -hmm. uh, definitely used to be at the Whiskey Go-Go there on, uh, on Sunset. Sunset Boulevard sunset. is very popular. Yeah, yeah. Anything you perform on Sunset, you know, you just definitely will be remembered. Troubadour. So, Didn't you do the Troubadour as well? Uh, I might have done that one. I might have, I've done the Viper Room. I've uh, done the Roxy. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, I was wait, on wait, stage. Wait. I'm sorry, the Roxy? For, oh, that's right. They, they had one in New York. Well, they had one in New York, too. Okay, so we're talking yeah. about L.A. Okay. Yeah, 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 that one, too. That one, too. Uh, the House of Blues before they, Blues. you know, took it down. Uh, man, just, just bouncing around downtown L.A., uh, uh, I think it's called Skyline, something like that. Rooftop, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, a rooftop over a sunset, man. I'm, I'm, I've been bouncing around for years. I've been doing it for years, you know. At the same time, just uh, balancing the family right now. I got a two year old, uh, name's Juno. So, uh, uh it's definitely extra, extra inspiration. She'd be with me in the studio playing on the pianos, but um. <laughs> You know, just balancing. I'm balancing right now, man. I'm actually, you know, when I'm in the phase of creating, I, I go behind the scenes and just like not necessarily be under the radar, but just, you know, just get my craft together so that I can make a lot of noise when it's time. So I'm like, you know, it's like running for mayor. You just got a campaign and campaign. And I, that's what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. How do you yeah. describe the music that you typically typically create? How do you describe your music? Oh man, uh, I would describe it as relatable and conscious okay. and very, very uh, diverse in creativity as well. Uh, just even listening to, it's crazy coming up and doing my own music, right? Just how listening, how uh, hip hop has changed throughout the years and how the sound right. has changed throughout the years. Right. You know, like I feel like you know, I feel like I can grab all those essence just because I've been learning and adapting it all through these years. You know, some people just still uh, make the same sound for all these years whenever they started. And today's sound might not be that sound, but it's about how you adapt that and try to make all that cohesive and go to the get go together. You know, like my style could be like something from the 2000s South Southern hip hop, but then I'm gonna make sure to put something to where it's relatable to 
uh, 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 my target, you know, my uh, 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 younger generation, the uh, older generation, my age, you know, I'm mm -hmm. trying to be in a whole uh, uh, age range to touch people in all different type of areas to where they can relate with uh, my music as a producer and an artist. Well, so you're doing both. Will you have any features on your album? And, and anyone, did you reach out to someone like, uh, you know, from, from today? Any features? Uh, man, you know, features, features, I have nothing against features, but then a lot of people, some people out there that's, you know, upcoming, or some people that's has actually made it, has actually seen and heard some of my stuff. He's like, bro, come on, let's do it. Let's get in the studio, you know, get it together. Yeah. Let's come on. I'm like, yeah, yeah, man, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh -huh. You know, so like the features, the features, they're there. They're there. I'm, I, I got, <laughs> I got my usual people, you know, on there. And then, you know, people that <laughs> money, money hungry, they coming for me. You wow. know, and wow. I want to collaborate with my son. We have a song that I really, a great song. We had a a podcast, a radio show with me, my son Terrence, my husband Terrence, my daughter Cheyenne, and nephew Narayan. It was called oh, It's oh. a Family Affair. Okay. And you can actually people can actually go on YouTube right now <laughs> and watch it. And say it's a family affair. Yeah, put my name in Kathleen Bradley. It always pops mm -hmm. up when you put Kathleen Bradley in, but it's mm -hmm. a family affair. You know, based on yeah. the old Sly Stone, it's a family affair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We Sly started Stone. out using his um music to the intro because we show baby pictures of us and everything something really nice my nephew put together i helped yeah. really produce and direct that that show a lot and did a lot of the writing on it but we had, it was very successful for a few years and then there was a point where we couldn't use sly stone's music anymore because you right. know they were cracking yeah. down on people yeah. using, copyright. uh copywriting so yeah. terrence wrote his song we the family kind of collaborated on it and oh. it's called Family First. And we put that on. And you'll hear it on some of the It's a Family Affairs show at the beginning. And we yeah. did a video and everything with it. And it, it's really when I want to take it to the next level. And I keep saying that. And I've shown. And I have a lot, a lot of people in the music industry. But some I, of them, I'm you know, sure. not R&B. Most of them are R&B and, and mm -hmm. things of that nature. But. I'm going to really start promoting. And like you say, I'm going to be on the campaign to really get my son into the door. There's so many people out there and rappers that are not even half, not even one iota as talented as Sir Reddington, my son, the son of Miss Parker. I got a hashtag yeah. called son of Miss Parker. I that he up. deserves a break yeah. today. And I'm going to reach out to more people. Hopefully through people seeing this broadcast, your uh, podcast. Mm -hmm. That you'll contact me or, or my son or Sir Bennington, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, when right. helping really put him on the map. It just takes the right person. And I'm gonna tell I, I know too many folks that I need to just reach out to because sometimes mm -hmm. people get fuddy duddy in Hollywood and the music rap. Like, I, that's right, I'm not gonna ask them why you couldn't. I'm like, I don't care. I know Tina Lawson, Beyonce's mama, who knows uh, Jay Z. I'm like, you know, I, I'm going to reach out to Tina. Just say, hey, here's a link. See if you can get them to listen to it. Reach you out to You never know them. till you ask. I always believe you. That's never right. know till you ask. That's and I'm right. not going to just be holding back no more and having people think I'm, I'm not using people. It's just utilizing. There's a difference between using right. people and utilizing your contacts. Absolutely. And that's going to happen real soon. Snoop Dogg, no Snoop Dogg. All of them. Come on. You're hey, not going to go far. Open. You have to ask. I'm telling you. You have to. Always that's, people that's knock, right. knock, knock. Who's that's there? Right. If you're standing on the side of the door, they ain't going to even know you're there because you ain't knocking. And you'll that's definitely right. never get in. <laughs> never get in. So so are you sir's manager? Do, do you act as a manager? I'm his momager you? sometimes. The momager. <laughs> <laughs> we have a whole thing on there, too, on the, our uh, podcast, A Family Affair, about momagers. And, momager. I, you know, I, I always do like to just... I'm very creative, though. I really am. I mm -hmm. love to produce, and, I, and I'm always helpful to other people and trying to get them. Pro I probably promote other people better than I do myself. But uh, I'm not really his manager, but, you know, I'm always uh, you help him out in his corner, and I'm always going to be looking out for him, and, uh, you know, I'm just going to 
like this show, you know, I, and I was glad you asked me to do it. And, I, you know, I had my ma my manager look into it because I don't just do every show. A lot of people have wow, approached wow, me and wow. I feel kind of bad. Some people are new and up and coming, but, you know, you can't spread yourself too thin. And I, yeah. I thought and not being, you know, your show is very uh, uh, conscious minded of, especially I saw a lot of uh, people you've introduced and allowed for them to be seen yeah. from your show, which is what it's all about, you know. That's right. So this That's is right. going to be a good opportunity for people to see him and learn more about him. Because yes, I'm always is. pushing him on my Instagram. I have 40,000 followers. So he's he's building. He's building. We're getting him there. It's the right. race. And, and we're about to see the, the winning line. We're about to break through that <laughs> ribbon right now. This That's year. right. Mm -hmm. we're I, I, heard, I heard his music. I know what he's capable of doing. And I know see some of that through. other stuff. And he's on yeah. uh, uh, Spotify, right, T? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So they can go there. And, and he, he can he has beats for y'all who need some There's There's another thing, too, like what you were saying. Um, mm -hmm about you know how it is out here with the industry every the thing is people think that uh you know who's not from here it could be you know the opportunity might be a little difficult just because of how much is growing and how much people how many people have like a record label or whatever type of business through that through that industry it's it's a lot it's a lot of them and you know and uh i was mentioning to you earlier that even uh, not every single one might be before you, but then that goes back to the people trying to come here for the opportunity. There's multiple opportunities. It's very, very uh, um, um, easy to to try to get and adapt to what you're trying to do in music. It's yeah. just, that's the easy part is the door. Now walking through it is actually maintaining and trying to, you know, no matter what it is, you know, even if my mom does help me in my career or I do the hard work, it's, it's just no matter what, it's just going to be hard work in general. Yeah. It's hard work to get to the top in general. And, you know, you got to go through a, a lot of other people to make it, you know, and then be they consistent. will help you make it. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And trade that energy of cohesiveness and trying to, you know, make it together and then, you know, just blow up in, in, in an unimaginable way. So, um mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's that's well said. Also, you know, uh, what you spoke on. What are your main goals in the music industry? Like, what is it that you really, really want and trying to get to? Man, uh, I really want to do something to inspire the younger generation to learn this music, learn this business. Uh, you know, really start a school. And that's just one of them oh, wow. and really, really, really just, uh, you know, become so much of a student and put in the hours to where I master in my craft to where I can just really get back to where, you know, the people that have helped me. And that's really my goal is the people that, that help me, you know, the, everything else is going to come itself as far as my, I feel like my music is so intertwined that it feels automatic and it feels almost effortless and, you know, it just feels like it's a love and it's an effortless thing. And, and I'm just like really adapting to other people that relate to my music at the same time. I feel like that's a, like a second nature automatic given in there. And once that even doesn't even happen, it just goes back to my main goal of really, really, really starting something to give back the education of the music for younger generation and you know just to have that type of school you know nipsey nipsey hustle did have us i don't even know he had like teaching young like production and artistry like even right down the street from where i live man or you know just right here on crenshaw and slauson so you know things like that and people like that i see to help me inspire me to even go even further to really yeah, really yeah. know that i'm certain to really do this so you know i'm just just really happy and the, uh, seeing what the road is doing, and I see it, and you know, by the end of the day, it's gonna happen. Wow, that's that's deep. You have it all mapped out. You know? Yeah, I'm very <laughs> proud of him, as you can yeah, tell. You have I, it all mapped I, out. I, I'm I'm just really enjoying watching him and the growth from whence he came, and how he's just been consecutively, consistently yeah. involved and evolving. And he, this 2022 is. We claim it his year. Every time I see an award show, the Emmys or the uh, music awards and all of those, I'm like, I know the boy, he's got to be up there. We claim it. He's going to be up there. And like I said, I appreciate what he's doing and how he's doing it. 
what he does. And I, I just, you know, I'm very proud of him. I appreciate Listen, that. I want you to keep going. And I really thank your, your mom, Kathleen Bradley and Sir Reddington. Thank you for coming on to the show. Um, this is going to be wonderful. I'm going to make sure this goes everywhere so everyone can know who you are. And I know you already have your fan base anyway. So I just want to thank you, man, for, for attending. We're building his fan base, but make sure they go on to follow him on Instagram, sir, right. underscore right. Reddington, R-E-D-D-I-N-G-T-O-N. That's, right. That's, right. That's right. And and make sure you check out his YouTube page, <laughs> Sir Reddington, all the songs and videos, and Spotify also, yeah. right? Thank you. I really appreciate both of you for, for, uh, and for allowing me to do this interview, Ms. Kathleen. I thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. Thank you. We thank Ro Brooks, Appreciate my you, manager. Man. Ro did it. Likewise. Have to thank our Ro. <laughs> thank you, y'all. And I want to tell everybody, this is A Vision Entertainment. The show will air on Comcast Xfinity every Thursday, 6 o'clock to 6.30. The radio show, I have that also. I have a lot going on, and people will see this all around. So. All right. Wonderful. <laughs> so yes, very good. Thank you. And I thank you. And this is A Vision Entertainment. I'll see you. Peace. Peace, everyone.